I try and tidy up my craft room a bit, it's getting into a rather a bit of a state. Um, and I've got quite a lot of stencils now, so I thought I'd make myself um, a folder um, from scratch. I wanted something that was going to be really sturdy but not take up too much room. And um, so I built it from scratch from chipboard um, and then used my bind at all. Um, to do the spine. Um, I've used uh, a lot of mixed media background techniques on here and I have done a step-by-step -step video which follows this um, if anybody is interested to see the steps that I use to create it. I know I've got quite a lot of um, new subscribers um, who are new to crafting so um, you know possibly they may be interested as well to have a look through and um, learn how to do some of these techniques so perhaps you know they can do something similar in the future or use it for other projects. Anyway um, I got two pieces of very thick chipboard. Um, for those in the UK I bought it from Every Crafts a Pound and I would say that it's you know it's probably about a quarter of an inch thick. Um, I've decorated both sides of the cover in a different style. And I've used lots of stamping, background paint. Um, also on the front cover I've done some stamping and then used gilding flakes. Um, I'll show you how to do that. Um, and then for the title, I downloaded some Scrabble tiles from um, Pinterest. It was a free printable. And uh, so I've used that for my title. I didn't want to put any um, heavy embellishments on the front um, because it is purely for a practical um, working folder and it's got to be on my shelf and have other books stacked by the side of it so any embellishments would end up getting knocked off or get in the way so um, you know it is fairly flat apart from these uh, stencil tiles which I cut out and then stuck onto chipboard again um, to give them a bit of dimension but that's the only dimension that there is. Um, as you'll see from the video I used heavy duty folders and cut them to my requirements and um, this particular binder is just going to be for all my small um, stencils. I wanted something you know, that would hold them securely because they keep them falling out of a normal binder and then I've left myself plenty of pages at the end um, for any future ones I get and then I've also decorated the back cover again using lots of stamping um, and painting techniques. I wanted it to be different from the front cover um, but it does match the front cover as well and then the back cover again is on a similar line. I've also used um, tissue paper on here from the Paper Mania um, tissue paper by Do Crafts, there's a bird and, and then on the front I've used Tim Holtz on um, tissue paper that had the butterfly on. So um, that's it really basically so if you want to follow along after and see how I put this together please do otherwise thanks very much for watching so far and please leave me comments and um, I hope you all have a happy new year. The first thing we're going to do is prepare our pages. Um, I'm using some of these uh, ring binder folders. Um, you could use these cheap ones um, but they're not really that thick but you can buy these from the local supermarket normally in about packs of a hundred for a couple of pounds. Um, but 
I don't know how long they would last before they ripped with the constant taking in and out of the stencils. Um, what I'm going to use is these thicker heavy duty ones. These are Rexel NRB slash A42 files. Um, they are quite pricey, but um, I didn't pay for mine because my husband got a load from somewhere that we've had for ages. Um, so I'm going to cut these down. But I should imagine, um, you know, any heavy duty any polythyrene. I think some people um, have used record um, folders, you know, for like keeping old single vinyl singles and things in. You can buy those from eBay, reasonably cheap. And most of them though are 7x7, seven seven, which would only suit smaller stencils. And although I want to use this book for smaller stencils, I've got a few that are slightly bigger than that. So, um, mine is going to be about 8 inches by 8.5. Anyway, you can um, sort out your pages to suit yourself really what you require. This is just a guide really about how to put a, a book together if you want to do something similar. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut down my pages. Um, I've already done a few. I'm going to have 20 folders in all in my book and I'm going to, I've got the open edge on that side, I want to keep all the um, already folded and sealed edges whole. So I'm going to cut this at 20, that's 20 centimetres, which if you're doing it in inches is um, seven and three quarter inches. And so I'm just going to zoom that up there. I'll keep that bit to use for something else. And then I'm going to cut this edge off where the ring bind holds are. And I'm going to put this edge here of the hole right on the cutting line so that I'm not cutting, it's actually cutting along that line and I'm not wasting any more plastic than that. If you can see, uh, yeah, see I've cut right through the bottom, use the bottom of the holes as my guide. Okay, so I'll do another one. Cutting at 20. And then line that holes up along the cutting wire. And cut that off. So then you've got opens like that and then it's sealed on two sides. Um, what we're going to be doing is using the bind it all um, and closing this long edge here so that then the stencils will be insorted, inserted into the top. The next thing I'm going to do is punch my pages with my bind it all. Um, you need to do it on the longer edge so you've got the shorter open edge at the top. Um, just do it how you would normally organise punching your pages. Um, you'll have to do them one at a time, so it's going to be a bit of a laborious job because the bind it all doesn't like to cut right through the plastic and you've still got these little bits sticking up so then you need to go along with your scissors and just trim those off in between each cut um, and you can make the binding as long 
or as short as you want and where the wires go um, I'm going to do mine right the way along so that it supports the stencils well so I've got two pieces of chipboard for my covers um, what I did was placed my folder on um, up to right up to the edge where the um, the holes are punched and then I've allowed about half an inch around the edge or one centimetre about a centimetre around each of the other edges which is the equivalent of yeah just under half an inch one two three four five sixteenths but you, know, you don't have to be too precise just make sure that you've got a, a bit of a border around the edge um, and then I've marked on here in pencil where the holes are for the um, the punching. This chipboard is really quite thick as well. Uh, it's a heavy duty one and it measures three millimeters or two sixteenths of an inch because we don't want it bending or going anywhere it's got to be you know, strong enough to hold it I cut it from a 12 inch sheet um, and I used a Stanley knife to cut it because it's so thick and the normal little paper trimmer knives are just not sturdy enough to do it. And then when I'd finished I just sort of went over the edges with a sanding tool just to get rid of any uneven edges. Um, I'm going to be decorating the cover with a lot of um, tissue and napkins and other things so I'm going to cover all sides with a coat of white primer um, this chipboard's quite porous as well so it just makes it a better surface to work on and gives you a better end result I'm going to put it on. Not too thick, but not too thin either. I want it to have a good protection. Now I'm going to be gluing some tissue on to the canvas using Mod Podge. Um, I like to put glue onto the canvas first, um, stick my piece on and then add more Mod Podge over the top. Um, I've just drawn a quick outline um, around this piece because it's very large and I didn't want to glue all the canvas in one go um, and I'm going to be speeding up the video from now um, so you don't get bored to tears watching me do this all in slow motion
the whole of both sides of the cover with the tissue and I just cut around the edges to neaten it up. And obviously this is after all the Mod Podge has dried. And uh, then to neaten up the edges I've taken my sander and just rubbed it all down so that the edges are smooth and all the excess overhanging tissue paper um, comes off. Mixing some cerulean blue acrylic paint um, with some uh, acrylic glazing medium. Um, I want to. I'm doing this so that it will thin the paint down and make it more transparent. Um, because I want the um, design of the tissue paper to show through. Um, I've also added some water uh, to it as well. And. Um, I'm just going to start painting it on in various places in the canvas, rubbing it with my finger. Um, as you can see, the tissue paper in the background is still showing through quite well. decide that some of the blue has gone on a bit too thick so I start to dab some of it off with a baby wipe. Um, it adds a bit of texture to the paint as well. Now I'm mixing up some Reeves acrylic paint in lime yellow um, again with some of the acrylic medium and also some water to water it down. System 3 acrylic paint by Dale and Rowney in a fluorescent pink colour and add in the water and the acrylic glazing medium again. <laughs>
once it was dried I mixed together some white gesso and water um, to make a very thin paint solution and um, I'm now rubbing it over all the canvas and blending in the edges where the three colours meet. It just um, tones everything down a bit and stops the colours from being quite so violent. I did this to both the front and the back canvases. Um, I took some uh, Adirondack alcohol blending solution um, and put some onto a tissue uh, it's a dried up baby wipe um, and I wanted to sort of take some of the gesso down a little bit give it a bit more vintage look and it sort of just rubbed it a bit off in certain places and left it on certain places uh, it just gives it a bit of effect really you don't have to do it but it just sort of evens things out a bit and um, and I wanted to take some of the um, gesso as well off of the butterfly because I wanted to keep that quite bright. Uh, here I'm tipping some of the leftover gesso mix onto my mat and uh, rubbing it with my fingers. As you would have seen throughout this, I love doing things with my fingers. I just have more control. Um, I'm using the crosshatch stamp from the um, Jofi stamp range from Paper Artsy. And um, I'm just going to be stamping this randomly all over the canvas. Um, it just helps to blend in edges and uh, add a bit more interest. Um, from now on you're going to be seeing me doing a lot of stamping with lots of different stamps and um, lots of different colours. gloss finish by Anita's. Um, it's the same more or less as glossy accents but a bit thinner and cheaper and I like it to use when I'm doing a big area um, like the butterfly because you can spread it over with your finger. It doesn't seem to be quite as sticky as glossy accents. <laughs>
Um, here I'm showing you a stamp from Indigo Blue, um, some flitter glue and the Mega Flakes. I'm going to um, stamp the um, Flourish in a couple of places on both the front and the back cover. Um, it's a bit of a fiddly, messy process. This glue is absolutely really sticky but it's the perfect glue for doing gilding flakes. Um, you take the small pad that comes with the, the glue. I actually got mine as a set but you can buy them separately if you've bought the glue separately. Um, and you rub some of the glue into the pad so that you're effectively forming your own glue pad, like an ink pad. And it soak the glue soaks into the pad. You right, you take your uh, stamp and then dab the ink um, the glue all over it like you would do as if you were using an ink pad. Um, as soon as you finish stamping as well with this, you need to wash it and uh, scrub it with mild soap to get the glue off so um, you don't want to ruin your stamp. Just make sure that you've got a very even coverage. I'm just wiping off a few little stray spots there so that they don't go on to the cover. could have done this on a block but I just decided to just keep it as it was and make sure you press it firmly all over. I'm just, uh, well, I was contemplating putting that on top and then rubbing it but uh, I just decided to carry on pushing it down with my hands. It takes quite a while to dry as well, so if you're going to be stamping a couple of images on there, you can um, stamp them both and then you know, then wash and then come back and put your gilding flakes on. But this time I'm doing it one at a time. The manufacturer actually decants all her gilding flakes into a bigger pot and leaves it in there but I'm still keeping mine in the smaller one and you just gently rub it onto the image with your fingers and make sure that you get it in all the places where the, the glue is. My fingers are slightly sticky from when I applied the glue to the pad so the flakes are sticking to my fingers as well which wasn't really a very really bright idea. This is a message of you don't want to sneeze or have an air fan or anything near because the stuff is so light it just flies everywhere. Um, you can put the excess back into the pot which is what I'm doing here. It actually doesn't really use that much for each application. Um, now I'm going to stamp the image on the other side before I finish them off and then do the same on the front cover.
make a different type of foam that they call their scoochie foam. It's much rougher than the other one. Um, a bit like a scouring pad. And then you rub all over um, where you've stamped. And then it takes all the excess flakes off and leaves you a lovely clear gilded image underneath. I really love using this product, um, apart from the fact that it's so messy, but uh, I suppose with practice, if you do it often enough, you can learn to, be <laughs> to handle it a bit better. It gives a really good effect, and once you've cleaned it all up, it really is a nice clear image, and it won't come off. Yeah, that's it now. It's there for life. And the flakes come in all different colours and variations. Some of them are several shades mixed together. The one I've used there is just plain silver. Now I'm using a Spectrum Noir alcohol ink pen in true black and I'm just going to outline all the edges. I like to do this because I think it sort of gives a nice frame whoops, to your uh, picture. I actually removed that boo-boo a little bit later with the blending pen and uh, you couldn't even see it. to paint the inside colours and I'm using the lime green and um, some white, titanium white and the Cerulean blue um, that I used on the front cover. I'm just going to layer these down across the page, um, watering it down with water, obviously, and, uh, and blending them together slightly um, where they where the lines meet other side and then left them both to dry. Now I've got a piece of sequin waste and some of the fluorescent pink that I used on the front before and I'm just going to do some random um, stenciling and stamping from now on. <laughs>
with this sheet of Scrabble tiles from Pinterest, which was a free download. And um, then I've cut them out into the individual squares that I need to spell out stencil. And then I went around the edges with black soot distress stain. Um, I'm just sort of laying them out a bit here to get an idea of how I want the layout to be. I'm fiddling about with them quite a bit in different ways and then eventually I glue them on with hot glue. I forgot to say that I glued them onto black card before I cut them out just to make them a bit stronger and slightly thicker. finished I've now bound it together with my bind tool and um, I've put my stencils into the pages and I've added labels onto each page as well so I know which each of the stencil is and I've put in my sequin ways there and um, at the back I've got quite a few pages still spare so that I can put plenty more stencils in and um, yep, so that's the front cover and there's the back cover anyway I hope you like my project um, please leave me a comment and uh, thanks very much for watching <laughs>